was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I hear you call Father, you were children I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne Father, you love me still And in love before you lay in the world's foundation You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone your home to seek out the lost You knew the great and terrible cost But Jesus, your face was I worked my fingers down to the bone But nothing I did could ever atone But Jesus, you paid my fare By your blood Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown And you rose that I might be a new creation I am born again by grace and grace alone I was in darkness all of my life Four rocks, a heart made of stone The Spirit you moved in me Except your touch, my sleeping spirit was awakened On my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shown Call me to a kingdom that cannot be shaken Sin by grace and grace alone. Yes, I stand in faith by grace and grace alone. I will run this race by grace and grace alone. I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace. Yeah, man. 
kindness he lavished on us His blood was the payment, his life was the cost We stood neath the debt we could never afford And our sins they are many, his mercy is more Good morning. Wonderful that you're hanging out with us this morning. And thank you, Jaco, for leading us into a time of worship. Just a short encouragement for you. Uh, in John 14, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. And he says in the following words, For you know him, the Holy Spirit, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Holy Spirit, the presence of God is with you. What a wonderful reminder. And because of this wonderful reality, you can have rest. The Word of God says, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. In Hebrews 4, it says, listen, for we who believe, that is, we who personally trust and confidently rely on God, enter that rest. So we have His inner peace now because we are confident in our salvation and assured of His power. Rest is a promise for you, and it is activated by faith and trust in God. You can experience and have rest in your everyday life, in every circumstance, in every challenge, in your relationships, at home, at work. You can experience the reality of rest. Rest is like your best friend in every moment. Isn't that wonderful? So let's quickly, shortly, before we move forward here, let's just pray and thank you um, for the promise of rest. Jesus, right now, we acknowledge the reality of your presence and we thank you, Jesus, for the spirit of rest. Father, I just thank you right now that you bless everybody joining us this morning. You bless our hearts and minds with your presence, with the mind of Christ. And Lord, we uh, are just aware right now of your presence and we thank you for the spirit of your rest in our lives. Lord, we pray and we ask for the spirit of grace to be aware of the reality of your presence and rest. Father, I pray that you bless everybody watching right now with your presence and with your rest. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Amen. Few quick announcements. Due to the government restrictions, church will be only online during this month. So church only online during this month of January. As a reminder, you can give very conveniently through online or through sending us a check 
here at Salem. Thank you for your generosity to give and to bless the ministry of Salem and to bless our city of Thunder Bay. Now, get ready for a powerful, encouraging message by Matt. Well, good morning. It's great to be able to speak with you again. Uh, we're now into the second week of this new year. And how's it been going so far? I hope everyone's doing well this year so far in 2021. Now, it's going to take me a while to say that, 2021. We said so many times 2020. Now it's 2021. What thoughts have we had about this new year so far? Maybe this year has started off great for some. Or maybe for some, it's, it's been hard. You've experienced maybe some grief or challenges or difficulty. But I want to say that it's both. We live in a world where we experience at times joy and celebrations. And at times we experience hardships, trials, and just sometimes just down moments. And see, when we enter a new year, like everything, we, we act like everything just shifts on a dime. But the truth is, it's not like that. You know, um, prophetic voices in the church have been saying amazing things. You know, that we were going to experience, you know, victory in a, in a time of war. Or clarity of vision and other things that are really amazing. Things I believe will happen this year. All good things. And there's also a carryover of words that were spoken in 2020 that are still continuing into this year and coming into greater fulfillment. It's great to receive words on, you know, uh, how the church is doing in this season and direction for our lives. But I believe, you know, God is doing a work no matter what year it is. And so we can expect that no matter what the year is, even though this is 2021, regardless of the year, God is doing something amazing. My wife and I have this tradition where every year we make what's called a vision board. And, you know, we each have our own and we each go through, you know, flyers and magazines and things. And we look for pictures or, or words that we feel that um, God is speaking into our lives for the new year. Or maybe things that we desire to happen, you know, practical steps for the direction of our lives. And what I have uh, found this year when putting my vision board together uh, was that there was a few things that carried over from the vision board that I had done in 2020. And that's a good thing. And there's still things from last year that I want to see happen again and even more. And so just as the good things carry into the new year, unfortunately, so do the other things. Watching Times Square on New Year's Eve, it's really apparent to even to those that aren't in the church that the issues that we experienced in 2020 are still being experienced even now. For example, with all this COVID stuff, you know, we, we, we think that, you know, it's now it's 2021 and now we're not going to experience COVID. But the truth is, this has come into the new year along with everything else. We're praying and believing that we'll see an end to this. But still, this is carried over from 2020 into this year. So, so we need that understanding coming into this year where we see that we can have a lot of joys and celebrations, but at the, time, at the same time, we can experience, you know, trials and hardships. And in light of that, we're going to look at a well-known psalm, Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a hope-filled, faith-filled, comforting scripture filled with God's promises for his people. But let's keep in mind that Psalm 91 uh, contains truth, not without trials and hardships or escaping the reality of things that might happen. But the beauty of this psalm is that in the midst of trials, we can be reminded of these truths. Even James said in chapter 1 that we will experience trials. And so in light of that, let's surround ourselves in the midst of Psalm 91 with, with God's promises that he has for us. These promises that are presented. So let's get into it. Verses 1 and 2. 
He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the Amplified Translation adds, Whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. We don't need to get over-spiritual when in verse 1 we hear about the secret place. We can just call this the special place, you know, that the place where we're invited to be, where, where you and I, as individuals, God is calling you and I to this place, this place where we can be alone with God, you know, in the closeness of his shadow, the shadow of the Almighty. You know, if you're going to be under someone's shadow, you're going to be close to that person. So God is calling us to this place of closeness to his, to his nurture and his care and his protection. A place where we are safe. A place where we can put our trust in God in the midst of everything that goes, around, goes on around us. The secret place is not just a place to run to when things get, get tough, but God is calling us to continually be in this place. You know, his presence 24-7 to always be the branch that hangs on the vine. And I also want to look at, in these verses, look at all the names of God that are listed. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that's the first one, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that's the second, and I will say of the Lord, that's the third, He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God, in him I will trust. Six names for God are listed just in these first two verses. And so think about that. This most high God, this almighty God is calling us to this place called the secret place. This place where we can be in his presence. And that's the anchor for the rest of this psalm is verses one and two. So keep those verses in mind as we continue through the rest of this. See, God can't be a place of refuge for us if we don't know who he is. If we don't know him as a God that's almighty, as the God that we can trust. But the truth is, the more that we know him, and the more we trust him, the more that we can see him as our refuge. And this is the importance of the secret place, where we abide in him where we truly get to know God. You know, the more we spend time in that secret place alone with God, the more we can know him. He is the most high God. He's almighty, our refuge and fortress. And he's calling us to this place where it's just me and him, just you and him, where you can trust him fully no matter what happens this year. Let's continue with verses 3 and 4. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Another translation says hunter's trap. If we don't know what a fowler is, it's just a, a hunter's trap. And from perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now, verses 3 and 4 give some really powerful metaphors which symbolize some practical ways that we as believers are protected and cared for as God promises to protect us. So the first symbol we see is the hunter's trap. And so I believe this means that, you know, God promises to rescue us from the tactics of the enemy, the, the, you know, the ways that the enemy tries to trap us and cause us to get off track in our walk with the Lord but we are protected by remaining in the secret place. The second symbol listed is perilous pestilence, meaning that we're protected from things like sickness or disease. This is a promise. But what do I mean by this is a promise? It's not that we ever won't get sick. You know, it's basically foolish to think that but it's comforting to know that he is our God. He is our almighty God. That nothing that comes against us can separate us from God as we choose to abide in him under his shadow. God has healed and he will continue to heal even this year. 
but it doesn't mean we won't get sick. It's that God is able to heal. We can trust in that promise, as many have been. I believe we can also take this in a spiritual sense, you know, that God rescues us in a, in a spiritual sense that we are, um, you know, protected from the, di- the disease of the enemy. The third symbol, it says, he shall cover you with his feathers. Feathers are symbolized as protection. That as we dwell in the secret place, God is longing to gather us under his wing. And the last symbol we see is this picture of the shield and buckler. You know, the shield is is a smaller shield and the buckler is a larger shield. And we're protected by God's truth. This is what that shield means. We're protected by God's truth. As we abide, God promises that we are filled with the truth of God and we are protected like this armor, like this shield. The last two symbols, you know, this picture of um, God covering us with his feathers and God protecting us like armor, you know, these these two symbols make a powerful picture. You know, God covers us, he nurtures us, but at the same time, he strengthens us, and we are protected by the truth, a strong armor in the midst of the things that we face. Verses 5 and 6. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. So these verses tell us that because of God's protection, being surrounded in the secret place, that in the midst of life and chaos, God promises we don't have to be afraid. Again, this is not calling us to foolishness, you know, thinking that nothing bad will ever happen to us. But we can be comforted by God's promises and protection and care. And so we don't have to be afraid that we can carry hope instead of fear, faith and confidence in our almighty God, the most high, our God, a place of refuge. This is what we're promised. When we were kids, didn't we have more confidence knowing that our parents were protecting us? It didn't mean that we never got hurt. You know, it's like, you know, I'm sure something would have happened to, you know, us at one point or another. You know, hey, dad, look, I'm going to jump off this tree, and it hurt, but wasn't it good to know that our parents were there as soon as we were hurt, that we could, that they could be that place of trust for us. And our parents were a place of refuge in that moment where we got hurt. God, our Father, wants to be that for us, and even more. It's comforting to know that God sometimes allows things to happen in our lives, but these things are not out of his power and control. He still promises to protect us. Uh, Verses 7 and 8. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 7, so a thousand may fall at your side. These are pretty good odds for us as believers. That's one thing. But I believe this verse is also saying that through Christ, there are no impossibilities. You know, this is God's heart for you and me, that we are protected in such a great number, such a great number of things that would want to come against us. But again, like I mentioned before, this doesn't mean that we, are not, we aren't gonna, ever going to get hurt. You know, it's not always 100% the case. Things will happen, but in light of the bigger picture, we can trust and know that God is with us no matter what happens. You know, in summer of 2015, my dad passed away, and still to this day, I, I don't fully know why he passed. But I know that my dad belonged to Jesus. My dad was one that abided in Christ. And that his passing on earth, I know this for one, that it was for his benefit that he went to heaven. No matter what happens to me or to you, 
God sees, and he sees the things that we wouldn't see. And so as we step into this year, God is calling us not to be afraid. Even when something happens, to know that we're really not harmed. We might be in the natural, we might be on on this earth, but it really doesn't compare to the life that we have in Christ. There's so much bigger, such a bigger picture than what we can see with these eyes. Now, on the other hand, as we look at verse 8, it also says, your eyes shall look and see the reward of the wicked. So we just read about God's protection for us, but now we look at the other side, about those that do not follow Christ or those that are against us. And there's this theme in the Psalms where the psalmist repeatedly asks, you know, God, why does it seem that the righteous are struggling, but the wicked seem to prosper? And in verse 8, we read that there will be a reward for the wicked, though not a good reward, but we can trust in knowing that it's not our place to judge, it's not our place to, to bring revenge, but we can trust in an almighty God that will, you know, give the, um, that will avenge for us. And then verses 9 to 13, we see themes that are presented earlier, but now we see again. So from verse 9, Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. So again, these are God's promises of comfort and protection for those that choose, that willingly choose to abide in the secret place of the Almighty. Again, it's not saying that hardships will never come, will never happen to us, but anything that happens, good or bad, God is our source. He's the one we place our eyes upon and we trust in him, knowing who he is, knowing his heart, knowing his protection, his care in our lives. This is a very encouraging thought. No matter what happens in in my life this year, I can say that, you know, no matter what has happened even throughout my life in the past, I can be encouraged that he is for me. He is not against me. Verse 11 even says that he sends his angels as protection. This is a promise. He sends his angels. You know, we know about spiritual warfare. It's my personal belief that the angels that fight for us and and war for us outnumber those that are against us. Again, this isn't a call to foolishness. Even Jesus said no to the enemy when he was tempted and he refused to jump off the cliff. So God gives us a brain for a purpose. God's heart is to protect us so we stay on the right path, not to do whatever we want and think that nothing bad will happen. The enemy wants us to, th- wants us to think this way, but that's not the case. I'm going to close with verses 14 to 16. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Listen to that. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So verse 14 to 16, these closing verses of the psalm, now we see this shift in perspective where before, you know, the psalmist was writing to the reader, but now he's writing in, in almost in the first person as, you know, God is speaking over us to his people. Words of promise and blessing, which I believe is a beautiful way to end this psalm. Verse 14, and so now we know God is speaking this, so God says, because he has set his love upon me. God gives these promises for those that have chosen to love God, that choose and long for his presence, for the secret place. He never forces his love upon us or to spend time with him. Love is not love if it's out of obligation. 
And it's because we've chosen to love God that everything flows from that, all, all the blessings that God says I will give and show. And so out of our choice to love God, he says, I will deliver. God then promises to protect those that have chosen to have a relationship with God. I believe sometimes as believers, we can miss out on some of the blessings and things that God has for us because we have not fully put our trust in God. God desires that we put our trust in him alone and call to him. God doesn't force it. He really wants to bless us. But knowing God is to know that he is a God of relationship and he doesn't force himself upon us. Verses 15 to 16, so these are the blessings that God is talking about as we choose to love him. God longs to answer our prayers. He longs to protect us. He longs to bless us with promotion. He longs to prosper us with a long life. He promises to bless us with his salvation. But the most beautiful thing is his presence. As we call to him, God says, I will be with you in trouble. I will be with you in trouble. God is inviting us to this place of abiding in him this year. He's calling you and me to this secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. Again, you know, I want us to put away this idea that nothing bad will ever happen. But in verse 15, God says, I will be with him in trouble. The point is to be comforted and encouraged, filled with hope and faith this year, knowing that we have this big, almighty God, and he is the one that we look to. His heart is for us. His heart is to protect us and comfort us, to bless us through joys and celebrations and through trials and hardships as we choose to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let that be our perspective this year as we continue to enter into 2021. Be blessed today. Come thou fount of every blessing To my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Come for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodic song Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the Lord, I'm fixed upon it Mount of God's unchanging love Here I raise my Ebenezer Hither by thy help I come and I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus saw me while stranger Wandering from the fold of God He to rescue me from danger Interpol his precious blood Don't